Hello, and welcome to our virtual education program on nature journaling. Today, we're going to learn how to observe nature in our own backyards, on our balcony, or even inside. To do this, we all need to have a piece of paper or a journal, a pencil or a pen, and if you have colored pencils or crayons, feel free to use those as well. Throughout this presentation, I will be giving you time to pause the video to answer questions and to, to think. Feel free to take as much time as you need until you're ready to resume the video and you can press play. So let's get started. My name is Tyler Cash. I'm an environmental educator with Burr Conservancy of the Rockies and I will be your presenter today. As an environmental educator, my job is to educate everyone of all ages uh, about the environment and about natural history. And at the Bird Conservancy, we get to focus a lot on birds and their habitats around them. Bird Conservancy of the Rockies is a conservation nonprofit organization. Our mission is to conserve birds and their habitats. And we do this through an integrated approach of science, stewardship, and education. So think about what does it mean to conserve something? So to conserve something means to, to protect or to save a certain thing. So at Bird Conservancy, we wanna protect and save birds, but also their habitats. So what is a habitat? You can pause the video here and either write down or discuss, discuss your answers. So pause here and discuss what is a habitat. So a habitat is a place where an organism lives. It's an animal's home. So a lot of us, we live in a house or an apartment. We have, that's, that's our habitat. Birds can have a wide range of different habitats and different homes. So in order for an animal to survive in its, in its habitat, they need to have four things in order to survive. So you can pause here and you can brainstorm or write down what four items do it, does an animal need in their habitat in order to survive? So in a habitat, animals, they need food. Food provides us energy and without energy, we wouldn't be able to hunt or to protect ourselves. We also need water. Water is essential to life. We need water in order to survive in our habitats. We also need shelter, and shelter can look a lot different to a lot of different animals. Uh, for us as humans, our shelter is a roof over our head. Uh, for birds, a shelter might be their nest, or maybe even a, a burrow. We also need space, and some of us might have written down that we need air. We certainly need air to survive, and we like to think of that as space. So I always like to think about my room. If my room is my habitat, it's my home, it's where I live, and I had food, water, and shelter, and I decided to bring like a thousand elephants into my room, I wouldn't have any space. Therefore, I would not be able to survive in that habitat. So think about the last time that you noticed something in nature. What part of nature did you notice? Was it a tree, a plant, or maybe a bird? Where did you observe this? this nature. Maybe you observed it right outside your window. Maybe you can see nature outside your window right now. Or maybe it was on a neighborhood walk with your family. So pause here and think about the last time that you noticed something in nature. All right, so we're talking about a nature journal today. So what do you think a nature journal is? So pause here and either write down your answer or discuss with someone near, what is a nature journal? So keeping a nature journal or a scientific journal as some of us calls it, allows us to become keen observers of the natural world. These skills help us think like a scientist. There are some specific details that make a nature journal successful 
and help us understand what we're looking at. The first thing I always like to do is to make sure that I write my name on top of the page and where I am, but also the date. It's also important to write down what the weather feels like. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it sunny? Is it windy? And then on the screen here, we see five basic elements to make a nature journal successful. So we want to make sure on our nature journals that we draw pictures. The pictures will help us describe what we see around us and also give us a visual to what we're seeing. And you can also draw at different scales. So make sure that you draw a scale or draw a tree as large as it looks like. We also want to add observations, ideas, and thinking. So we want to add that comprehensive metadata, the time that you're observing, the temperature, the date, what the weather might be doing. We also want to make notes about colors. So maybe you are looking at a, a flower and the leaves are, are kind of yellowish, or maybe they're green. So you want to make sure that you, you make sure you add that detail to those drawings. We also want to make sure we add numbers to our nature journals so we can count how many there might be or show scale so we can see the relative size. So numbers are really important as well. Then the structure and the layout of the nature journal might change throughout your style. So lines can separate the page into sections and arrows will help connect words and text so that we know exactly where we're talking about. A nature journal is going to look a lot different than maybe the essay that you might be writing or a letter that you might write. It might be a little less organized. And lastly, for our nature journal, we want to make sure that we add words. So observations are recorded in either full paragraphs, they can be short sentences or fragments, or they can also just be labels. So with a nature journal, we have a lot of flexibility. And you want to make sure that you use what you feel creative with. Make sure you use your imagination and find your own style. And as long as you keep with these five main elements to a nature journal, your nature journal will be successful. So for our next activity, you will need a paper. You will need pencil or a pen. And then if you have crayons or colored pencils or watercolors, you can use those as well. And make sure we're keeping our curiosity. So now it's your turn. We're now going to observe an object in nature and we're gonna journal about it. So I want everyone, after we go through this, I want everyone to find an object in nature. It can be a stick in your backyard or a plant or a flower, or you can even find a safe spot to sit, maybe outside in your, in your front yard or backyard, or maybe just by your window. And with our piece of nature, we're going to observe. So we're gonna write down, I notice. We're also going to ask questions. So find something that you wonder about that object. And then we're going to try our best to make connections. We're going to find things that it reminds, of, reminds us as of something else. So remember the elements of a successful nature journal we talked about earlier. We want to make sure we have pictures. We want to make sure we have numbers and words. And then structure and lay out your journal as much as you want or in any fashion you, you find fitting. We'll give you around 10 or 20 minutes for this activity. And if you feel like you're done after a couple minutes, I challenge you to add more detail. Maybe look at the object a little bit closer or from a different angle. So right now you can pause this video and you can begin your nature journaling. Have fun. So now that you've finished with your nature journal, you can discuss with a classmate or think to yourself, what are some things you learned through your observations, thinking, and questioning? What skills do you feel like you just got better at? Can you use these skills to learn more about nature? I challenge you to try this activity using different parts of nature, or even to find a sit spot at your house or in a nearby park and practice your nature journaling skills. Journaling and drawing is a skill 
The more that you do it, the better you'll get at it. So thank you all for watching this virtual program. I hope you find time to spend out in nature and find time to create a nature journal because nature is all around us. We just have to go outside of our homes. So keep in touch. If you really enjoyed this program, we also provide this program as a live event or you can go to our website or our Facebook page to learn more of our virtual programs or family programs that we're, we're doing. So thank you all for learning about nature journaling. Uh, I hope you had fun and I hope you continue to do it.